So in this question, we're trying to figure out the magnitude and the direction of the displacement of this pipe elbow right here. So let's take a closer look at that. We can imagine we zoom in and we can see the pipe elbow. It might look something like this. And as the water is turned on, the temperature of the pipe is going to increase from 18 to 46 and a half degrees Celsius. And we have learned in this chapter that if there is an increase in temperature, then there's going to be a change in length of a metallic pipe or other such object. And so what happens is the pipe will expand in essence, and the pipe is going to expand along this section of the pipe, and it's also going to expand along this section of the pipe. And so we know that because it's expanding, the lower section of the pipe is going to expand to the right, and then this lower section of the pipe elbow is going to expand downward. And we need to figure out those expansions right there in order to get this problem correct. And we might wanna change this into a delta L in the X direction and then a delta L in the Y direction. So what that means is we have to apply this expansion or thermal expansion equation two times, once for the X and once for the Y direction. So let's begin with the X direction. We'll do delta L in the X direction and this is going to equal alpha. Now alpha is a coefficient of linear expansion and this is a value that is sometimes given to you in the question or you may have to look it up in a reference table. We will note that the pipe is made from copper. So what you'd have to do is look up the value for copper in the reference table for this chapter of the book and you should obtain a value of 17 times 10 to the negative six and this is measured in inverse degrees Celsius. And then you're going to multiply that by the original length of that horizontal section of pipe and that was given as 28 centimeters. And then you're going to multiply by the temperature change. Now, the temperature changes from 18 to 46.5. So what you'll do is take that final temperature of 46.5 and subtract the initial temperature of 18. This is in degrees Celsius. So you'll multiply that out. And when you do so, you should get 0 0.0136 approximately. And if we study the units carefully, the inverse degrees Celsius and the degrees Celsius cancel, this will leave us with just centimeters. Now, your homework system might want your answer expressed in millimeters. And so we'll make a little conversion here just in case that that is true. And we all know perhaps that one centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. So we're basically just going to multiply our answer by 10. And when we do that, we get 0.136, and this will now be millimeters. So that is the change in length for that horizontal section of the elbow, but the elbow is also going to expand downward, so we're going to calculate delta Ly using the same idea, so we'll take the coefficient of linear expansion. It still is copper, of course, so we'll use the same value. The vertical section of the elbow had a different length. It was 134 centimeters, so make sure you use that for your original length. And then you're gonna multiply by the same temperature change, the 46.5 degrees minus the 18 degrees Celsius. Multiply that all out, you'll find that the change in length in the Y direction is about 0 0.0649. This again comes out into centimeters. Basically, like before, multiply that by 10, and we now have the answer in millimeters. So that's going to be 0 0.649 millimeters. Now, the overall change in length needs to be determined, the overall magnitude. And to do that, we have to revert to some vector addition. So we have a vector pointing to the right. We have a vector pointing downward. To get that resultant, which we'll just make blue, you're going to have to do the Pythagorean theorem. So we might just call this the overall change in length. And then we have the components here, delta LX, delta LY. And we'll just do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. So here we go delta L squared is equal to delta LX squared plus delta LY squared. We'll fill in, I'm getting a little carried away with the colors here. Why don't we just square root both sides, get that over with, we'll take a big square root here, and then we'll fill in the known values. So again, we had that 0.136, that was millimeters squared, plus the 0.649 millimeters squared. All right, here we go. We're gonna type this in. Do so carefully on your calculator. Uh, when you do this, and then don't forget to take the square root, you're going to get, goodness, having some calculator issues here, you're gonna get about 0 
And this will be your overall magnitude for the change in length. And that comes out in millimeters. I believe we also needed the angle. Let's check it out. We go back and it says find the magnitude and direction of the displacement. Okay, fine. So the direction is going to be this angle right here. Use a little bit of trigonometry here. We can see that the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite, which is delta ly divided by the adjacent delta lx. To get the actual angle, we need to, of course, take the inverse tangent. So we're going to do the inverse tangent of the 0.649 millimeters over the 0.136 millimeters. You don't need to write down millimeters because they're going to cancel out anyways. When you do this, and make sure that your calculator is set to degree mode, as mine was not, so we'll try it one more time, and we get 78.2 degrees approximately. So we'll just come down here and write that the angle was about 72, excuse me, 78.2 I'll get it together eventually. Degrees, this is below the horizontal. If you're wondering why it's below the horizontal, just look back at the original picture. You can superimpose a little y-axis here and a little x-axis here. And we can clearly see, hopefully, that that angle is indeed below this horizontal line.